Alef, bet, bet, gimel, dalet, hey, bof, sein, chet, tet, yud, kof, kof, lamed, mem, yon, samech, ayin, pey, fit, sadi, kuf, reish, shun, sin, taf, now I think I've said enough. Welcome to this week's lesson of From the Aleph Bet, a series for anyone of any age who wishes to learn how to read and understand Hebrew, especially the Hebrew that's used in the experience of Judaism here in the United States. I'm Mark Golub. Again, it's a pleasure to be with you. Again, it's a pleasure to say thank you to all of you who've been in touch with me. The, the emails, the letters, even the calls come more and more each week, and it's very satisfying and gratifying to me. And all of us will continue to try to do the very best we can to bring you the best in a Hebrew course on television from the Aleph Bet. So as usual, I want to begin by reviewing quickly the letters and the vowels we've shown you so far and see how many of them you know. We're going to show you a letter See if you know the sound the letter makes, and see if you know the name of the letter, one by one, and these will be in alphabetical order. Here's the first letter. What sound does it make? You're correct. It makes no sound at all. It is the silent Aleph. Very good. Aleph is that letter. The next letter makes the sound of a B, Mitsuyan. This is the Hebrew letter called a Bet, Mitsuyan. The third letter of the Hebrew alphabet. How do you pronounce this letter? If you said G, the hard G, you are correct. The name of the letter is Gimel, Mitsuyan. The fourth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The sound it makes is if you said D, you are correct, Mitsuyan, and the name of the letter is Dalid Mitsuyan. Here's the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It makes the sound of the English letter H, Mitsuyan. The letter is called Hey, Mitsuyan again. The eighth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It makes the sound of a the slight clearing of the throat. We write it as a CH in English, but it is really the slight clearing of the throat. The and the name of the letter is Mitsuyan. Chet. This is the Chet. And the tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet makes the same sound as the English letter. Y, Mitsuyan. The name of the letter is Yud, Mitsuyan. And remember, the Yud acts the same way the English letter Y acts. If it has a vowel of its own, it is a consonant. If the Yud has no vowel under it or after it, then it is added to the preceding vowel to make an entire vowel. So the Yud is sometimes a consonant and sometimes a vowel. Now here's the 11th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It makes the sound of the English letter K is right. It is a K sound, and the name of the letter is the Kuf, Mitsuyan. The sound of the next letter in the Hebrew alphabet is L is correct. This is the letter Lamed, L in Hebrew. The thirteenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, we taught this to you last time. The sound of this letter is the M, Mitsuyan, M mm, sound. The name of the letter, Mem, Mitsuyan. And we've also shown you that the Mem is written differently when it comes at the end of a word. This is the final Mem, or in Hebrew, the Mem Sofit, Mitsuyan. And the next letter of the Hebrew alphabet, what sound does this letter make? N is correct. The name of the letter is Nun Mitsuyan. 
How about this letter? What sound does this letter make? S is correct. It is the letter called Samech Mitsuyan, and the Samech has the slice in it, which distinguishes it from the final Mem, which you can see right next to it. The Samech has the slice, Mitsuyan. Okay, what sound does this Hebrew letter make? If you said silent, you are correct. This is the silent ayin, and both the ayin and the aleph are the two silent letters in the Hebrew alphabet. They make no sound of their own. They simply make the sound of the vowel under or next to them. The silent ayin, mitsuyan. How about this letter? What sound does it make? P is correct, and it's called the Pei, Mitsuyan. And what happens if we take the Dagesh, the dot, out of the Pei? How is the Pei pronounced then? F is correct, and so we call it a Fe. It's really a Pei that makes an F sound. And remember, the pe and the fe are the exact same letter. They simply are pronounced differently if you take the dot out of the pe, called the dagesh, or you put the dagesh back into the pe. And we also taught you that this letter here is a final letter. It's a final fe, mitsuya. It's a final f. And so we have here the entire Pei family, the Pei, the Fei, and the final Fei, Mitsuyan. Okay, here's the next Hebrew letter you've learned. What sound does it make? If you said R, or again it's slightly rolled by Israelis, R, it is the R in English, and it's called the Reish, Mitsuyan, Reish or Reish, Mitsuyan. Here's the very first letter we ever taught you. What sound does it make? If you said sh, sh, you are correct. The name of this letter is Shin Mitsuyan. And here is the last letter, the 22nd letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It makes the sound of T, Mitsuyan. It's called a Tough, Mitsuyan. And remember that tough is the only letter in the Hebrew alphabet with a big toe. Mitsuyan, the letter tough. And the tough is pronounced as the letter T, whether it has a dagesh in it or whether it does not. And that's because we're learning Sephardic Hebrew, the Hebrew dialect spoken in the state of Israel. When I was young, the tough was pronounced as an S and called a suf when you took the dagesh out. But in modern Israeli Hebrew, the Sephardic pronunciation, the letter tough is pronounced as a T, with a dagesh or without a dagesh. So there you have all the Hebrew letters. Let's take a look at the Hebrew vowel sounds we've taught you so far. And remember, vowels in Hebrew are always dots and dashes, as opposed to the consonants, which are letters. And remember, there's always one vowel for every one Hebrew syllable. There's always a one-to-one -one correlation between the number of vowels in a Hebrew word and the number of syllables in a Hebrew word. So here again, we're going to use the silent letter Aleph and add a vowel sound to it. See if you can tell me what the vowel sound is of the vowels we've learned so far. Here's the first vowel. And this vowel is pronounced very good. Ah, as in the word father. It's called a patach. And we'll put the next vowel right next to it, under this aleph. What sound does this vowel make? And again, if you said ah, you are correct, ah, as in father. There are sometimes, by the way, when the kamatz is pronounced slightly differently, aw, as the kamatz is pronounced in Ashkenazic Hebrew, but by and large, in Sephardic Hebrew, 
Both the patach and the kamatz are pronounced ah as in the word father. Let's take a look at the next two Hebrew vowels. How is this vowel pronounced? If you said o as in Coke or as Coca-Cola, you are correct. The Israelis tend to pronounce it o, oh, not as much of a long o. We are learning it, however, as an o. And it's called the cholam. This actually is the cholam male because it has the vav underneath it. And right next to it, we put up the other way you do the o sound. And this is called the cholam chaser since the vav is not written under it. But in either case, both of these vowels are pronounced o as in the word Coke or Coca-Cola. And the next two vowels, how will you pronounce this vowel sound? U is correct. And remember, we taught you that if you're hit on top of the head, you say O. And if you're hit in the stomach, you say U. This is the shuruk. And next to it is the other way of writing the vowel sound, U, in Hebrew. It is the kubutz. Both of these vowels are pronounced U, as in the word moon, mitsuyan. And now we go to the dotted vowels. We put one dot under the aleph. It is pronounced E, as the word C, mitsuyan. And the one dot is called a hirik. If we put two dots under an aleph, this vowel is pronounced A, as in the word say or cake. And this two dotted vowel is called a tsere. Mitsuyan. And how about this vowel, three dots in an upside down triangle? E is correct, as in the English word bed, the short E, e, bed. And this three dotted vowel is called a segol. And remember that if you add a yud to any of the dotted vowels, the vowels basically stay the same. So, one dot with a yud is e, two dots with a yud is a, and three dots with a yud is e. And again, if you see how the mouth works, as you go from one dot to two dots to three dots, the mouth tends to get wider. e, a, e. e, a, e. One dot, e, two dots, a, three dots, e. Mitsuyan. And those are the vowel sounds we've learned thus far. We've also learned one other set of dots. What I've told you, it's the secret of reading Hebrew. This set of dots is called the Shva Mitsuyan. And Alex, what's the famous rule about the Shva? The Shva is never counted as a vowel. There you heard it. The Shva is never counted as a vowel. And that is true when a shva is silent and even when it is pronounced, and it's pronounced as a short I in English, i, as in the word fish. But even when there's a pronounced shva, i, it is never counted as a vowel. A shva is the only set of dots in Hebrew that is not counted as a vowel. Let's see again how the shva works. Now remember, a shva is added to the beginning or the end of a syllable to complete the syllable. But the shva never creates a syllable of its own. If a shva comes at the beginning of a syllable, it is pronounced i as in the word fish. And it's sort of a grace note or a grace beat that introduces a syllable. Most vowels create a beat in a Hebrew word. The shva adds a grace beat to a syllable. So again, if a shva comes at the beginning of a syllable, it's pronounced i as in the word fish, and it adds a grace beat to that syllable. If a shva comes at the end of a syllable, 
that schwa is silent and simply extends the syllable by the letter above the schwa. Let me say it one more time. If a schwa comes at the end of a syllable, it is silent and simply extends that syllable by the letter above the schwa. A pronounced schwa, therefore, always opens or begins a syllable, and a silent schwa always ends or closes that syllable. But the important thing to remember is that a schwa is the only set of dots which is never counted as a vowel and therefore never creates a syllable of its own. Even a pronounced schwa does not create its own syllable, but simply introduces the syllable that follows it with a grace beat. So, for example, take a look at this one syllable word. It is one of the most important words in the Hebrew language, especially in the experience of Judaism. All of these letters you know. And notice there's only one vowel in this word. It is the patach under the mem. And you remember, of course, that Hebrew is read down and then from right to left. And you remember that a shva is always pronounced when it comes under the first letter of a word, since obviously it's going to begin that syllable. The shva under the shin is pronounced i as in the word fish. Therefore, can you tell me how to pronounce this very important one-syllable Hebrew word? And if you said Shema, you are correct. Shema. Not Shema, but Shema. One syllable. And of course, many of you know the word Shema because it's the name of the most important prayer or statement made by Jews in the Jewish tradition. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad, which is normally translated, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And what does the word Shema really mean? Shema means hear or listen. Hear or listen. And the trick to Hebrew or any foreign language is associating in your own mind a mental picture of the same idea that you have when you hear the word in English with that same word in Hebrew. So whatever you imagine in your mind when you hear the word hear or listen, you should now associate with the word Shema, to hear or listen. By the way, the rabbis also use the word Shema to also mean understand. It's not enough to just hear something. It's to hear it in a way that one begins to understand it. And therefore, the line, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, doesn't simply mean, listen, Israel. Adonai is our God and Adonai is one. Rather, it means, listen and understand in the core of your being that Adonai is our God and Adonai is one. And we'll talk more about the Shema at another time. But right now, we're using the word Shema to teach the notion that the shva is never counted as a vowel, even when it's pronounced. Here you have a one-syllable word, shema, to hear, listen, understand. It is the command, by the way. In English, the imperative tense, to hear, to listen, with the sense of understand. And that's the pronounced shva. A silent shva simply ends a syllable and extends that syllable by one letter, the letter above the silent schwa. So now it's time to learn your next Hebrew letter. And what we're really going to do is complete a family of Hebrew letters, similar to the family of the pe, fe, and final fe. We're going to teach you now the kuf, chaf, and final chaf. And so we've put this up on the screen for you already. You see here the kuf. If you take the dagesh, or the cufflink, 
as some people see it, or the cat's eye, out of the cuff, you get a chaf. It makes the same sound of the clearing of the throat as the chet does. The chet and the chaf make the same sound. And therefore we express the chaf with the same two Hebrew letters, ch, and sometimes you'll see it transliterated as a kh. Either way, the ch or the kh is the clearing of the throat, the ch sound, and this is the letter chaf. And again, I remind you that the cuff and the chaf are really the exact same letter, either written with a dagesh or without a dagesh. With a dagesh, this is the letter cuff. Without the dagesh, it is still the letter cuff, but it is pronounced as a chaf. And why are there times that there is a dagesh or not a dagesh? It has to do with where the letter appears in a word and whether it is beginning or ending a Hebrew syllable. But it's the exact same letter. But the kaf is one of the three Hebrew letters which does change its sound depending on whether it's written with or without the dagesh. So here is the kaf which makes a K sound with a dagesh. And here is the chaf, again the slight clearing of the throat, when you take the dagesh out of the cuff. And the chaf is also written somewhat differently when it comes at the end of a word. Let's go back to the fe. When a fe is written at the end of a word, it's as if someone grabbed the horizontal line at the bottom and pulled it straight down below the line upon which letters are written to make the final fe. And if you want to remember what a final letter is, just push the letter back up to its horizontal position. And there you'll see it as the fe again. And if we do the same thing with a chaf, if we grab a hold of the horizontal line at the bottom and pull it straight down, it becomes a final chaf. And you'll notice how in the upper right hand corner it becomes a little fancier, the line extends to the right. But this is how you write the final chaf. Sometimes, by the way, young people mistake it for a final dalid, since it looks like a dalid that doesn't go below the line. But first let me say, there is no final dalid. There is no final dalid in Hebrew, just a plain old regular dalid. And second, remember that if you want to know what a final letter was or is before it is written in its final form, just push the line back up to its horizontal position. And here you see the letter looks nothing like a dalid. It is the chaf. So again, if you write the final chaf, it looks like this, and it's pronounced ch. It is the final chaf, and here is the cuff family. The cuff, the chaf, and the final chaf. And there's one more thing to show you about the final chaf. I've taught you already that every Hebrew letter has either a vowel, or a shva. And that very often you will see a word written and the last letter of the word doesn't seem to have either a vowel or a shva. And that's because every letter that ends a word ends a syllable and therefore if it does not have a vowel it must have a silent shva. And because it must have a silent shva it's understood and in most Hebrew words it's not even written. Let's take a simple example. You know this Hebrew word. See if you can pronounce this word. If you said lechem, you are correct. Lechem. And lechem means, very good, bread. Lechem means bread. Whatever you imagine when you say the English word bread, you should imagine when you say the Hebrew word Lechem, lechem. And notice that the final mem in the word lechem has nothing written under it. But it really does. It has an understood 
Shva Mitsuyan Alex. We put the Shva under the final Mem. It's understood, and therefore, since it's understood, it's not written. And virtually every Hebrew letter, when it comes at the end of a word, if it has a silent shva under it, that silent shva is simply understood and not written, except with one Hebrew letter. And the one Hebrew letter where the shva is written at the end of a word is with the final chaf. Almost because they like the way it looks. And notice the Shva is not put under the line, but is put inside the final chaf. This is the way a final chaf looks if it has a silent shva with it. The shva is written inside the chaf, above the line upon which all the letters are written. Again, normally Hebrew vowels are placed below the line. With the final chaf, the shva is placed inside the chaf above the line. And that's also true if the final chaf has a vowel. Very often the final chaf will have the vowel kamatz, and the kamatz is written again inside the chaf. So how would you pronounce this syllable, the final chaf with the vowel kamatz? If you said cha, you are correct. This is the syllable cha, it is often written at the end of a word. The point here is again that when we write either a shva or a vowel with a final chaf, it is written inside the letter. It's the only letter that that's true for, where the shva or the vowel is written inside the letter and above the line. So one more time, here is the family of the cuff. The cuff, the chaf, and the final chaf. And so I want to show you a couple of words that use the chaf and the final chaf. Let's take the final chaf first. One of the most important words in Judaism, in prayers, is a word that has the final chaf in it. We're going to put this word up on the screen. See if you can read this two vowel and therefore two-syllable Hebrew word, one of the most common of all Hebrew words. Notice, by the way, that under the first letter, the mem, there's also a vertical line down. This is a reminder that in words with two segols, the accent is on the first syllable. Most of the time, Hebrew words are accented on the last syllable, and therefore, when there's ever an exception, this little line, this vertical line down, is sometimes added by the publisher, especially in a prayer book, so that an individual is reminded to accent the syllable with the vertical line. So how would you read this first syllable? If you said, meh, you are correct. And now the second syllable, which ends in a final chaf, with a shva written inside it. If you said lech, you are correct. Try putting the word together. Melech is correct. And melech means king. And so whatever you imagine, when you think of the word king in English, you should now imagine when you think of the word Melech in Hebrew. This is the word Melech. Melech. Mitsuyan. By the way, the word Melech is made up of the three root letters of the word, and the three root letters are Mem, Lamed, Chaf. And since the Chaf comes at the end of the three letter root, we tend to write it as a final Chaf. So the three-letter root of this word is mem, lamed, chaf. And whenever you see a word with these three letters in this order, mem, lamed, chaf, it has something to do with royalty or kingship or sovereignty. So, for example, take a look at this word. 
notice you have the three root letters, Mem, Lamed, Chaf, and you have two vowels, the Patach under the Mem, and the Shuruk after the Chaf. So how many syllables are in this word? Two is correct. Can you read the first syllable of this word? If you said mal, you are correct. The laman has a silent shva. The silent shva tells you to extend the syllable by one letter, by the lamed, adding the letter to the ma, and you get one syllable, mal. And the second syllable? Mitsuyan, chut. Chut, mitsuyan. And therefore put the word together, these two syllables, and you get the word Malchut, from the three-letter root, Mem, Lamed, Chaf. And if you know the root, you have an idea of what the word means. And Malchut means a kingdom. The Melech rules a Malchut, his kingdom. Malchut, Mitsuyan. One more word with the three-letter root, Mem, Lamed, Chaf. A two-syllable word. Can you read the first syllable? If you said mal, you're correct again. Mal, the shva under the lamed is silent. Tells you to add the lamed to the preceding letter and vowel. Mal. And the second syllable? Ka, mitsuyan. And you put these two syllables together, you get the word... Malka, Mitsuyan. And Malka is the feminine of Melech. And so if Malka is the feminine of Melech, you know the word Malka means a queen, Mitsuyan. And in the Jewish tradition, the Shabbat is called a Malka. Shabbat HaMalka, the Sabbath queen. How beautiful. Shabbat Hamalka. The Sabbath is the queen. And now one other word with the chaf. And first I'm going to show you a three-letter root again. The three-letter root here is the bet, the resh, and the chaf, or the kaf. And whenever you see this three-letter root, it has something to do with blessing. Something to do with blessing. So let's take a look at these two Hebrew words, very well known. You hear them all the time. First, a noun. Take a look at this two vowel, and therefore two syllable noun. And notice that this time the shva is under the first letter of the word, which means it's pronounced i, as in the word fish. So how would you pronounce the entire first syllable? of this word. If you said bira, you are correct. Bira. The kamatz is the vowel under the resh for the syllable, and the bet and the shva open or introduce the syllable, begin the syllable, and therefore the entire syllable is pronounced bira, as if the bi were a grace beat. Bira. And how about the second syllable? If you said cha, the chaf, the letter we learned this lesson, plus the kamatz, and the hey is always silent at the end of a word, cha is correct. You put the word together, you get bracha. Bracha. A two syllable word, bracha, from the Hebrew root bet, resh, kaf, that has something to do with blessing. And the word bracha means, as a noun, blessing. A bracha is a blessing. A blessing. And whatever you associate mentally with the word blessing in English, it's what you should associate with the Hebrew word bracha as well. And now one more very well-known Hebrew word 
from the root bet resh kaf. Again, it's two vowels, so two syllables. Can you read the first syllable? Ba is correct, mitsuyan. It's simply the bet with the kamats. You wouldn't add the resh because the resh does not have a silent shva under it. So the first syllable is simply ba. And the second syllable? Ruch, mitsuyan, ruch. And you put the word together, you get baruch, mitsuyan. And baruch means blessed. Normally, blessed is or blessed are, depending on what the word following baruch is. But it is the past participle blessed, baruch. And of course, every blessing, every bracha, begins with the word baruch, blessed. Very often, baruch ata. And you can also read the word ata. Ata means you. Baruch ata, blessed are you. And it tends to go on to say, Baruch Atah Adonai, whatever the blessing is about. Blessed are you, Adonai, or O Lord. But Baruch is one of the most common words in Hebrew. It means blessed. It comes from the Hebrew root, Bet, Resh, Kaf. As does this noun, Bracha, which is the noun for blessing. So there you have the Kaf family, the Kaf the chaf without a dagesh, and the final chaf with the shva written inside the chaf. And you have the Hebrew words, bracha for blessing, baruch, the past participle blessed, either blessed is or blessed are. And we also taught you the Hebrew words, melech, king, malka, queen, Malchut, kingdom. And we also showed you one of the most important of all Hebrew words, the word Shema, which means hear or listen with the sense of to understand. Hear, listen, and understand. Shema. I hope you enjoyed that lesson of from the Aleph Bet. And remember, you can download lesson sheets and worksheets for every lesson of this series free of charge. Just visit the JBS website homepage at jbstv.org and click on the program icon for From the Aleph Bet. And then click on the very first option, From the Aleph Bet Hebrew Study Sheets. And for anyone who can send JBS, a tax-deductible donation of $180 or more will be pleased to send you the entire 20 program series one of From the Aleph Bet on DVD, complete with a CD of lesson sheets and worksheets. JBS, expanding Jewish understanding, celebrating all things Jewish. Be well, my friends. Alef bet bet gimel dalit hey bav sein chet tet yud kaf kaf lamed men yom samecha.